Hi guys, well today we're going to be taking a look at the Gigabyte Z170 MX Gaming 5. So this board arrived on the scene at the tail end of last year, but it's actually had very little coverage, which is why we're going to be taking a look at it today. So as you may have guessed from its name in the MX, uh, the form factor here that we're dealing with is Micro ATX. Uh, so it's kind of in between ATX and Mini ITX, and as we're going to find out today, this board still retains and still offers some of those much loved features which we find on those larger siblings. For its size, the Z170MX Gaming 5 packs in some really useful features which system builders will appreciate. This board uses a well-organised layout with strong emphasis there on the audio. Now, Gaming 5 is priced as follows. It's £140 in the UK, $145 in the States, which is a bit unfortunate for us in the UK. But, uh, you know, if you're looking to downsize, but not quite down to that super small uh, Mini ITX, then this could be a worthwhile consideration for you. So let's begin. Right guys, well let's start with a look at the packaging for our Gaming 5. So here you can see we've got this uh, kind of Heroes of the Storm skin on the actual box itself, as uh, Gigabyte are the exclusive partners for BlizzCon. Now along the bottom there we've got the features, but that is pretty much it for the front. And then we've got this lid which opens out and you've got a bit of an overview of the actual board and uh, you know kind of the layout and the features. And then flipping that over, we've got uh, a look at the actual features, obviously with uh, USB 3.1, uh, this is kind of a, a big thing for the Z170 chipset. And then, as I said in the introduction, uh, the audio is a big feature on this particular board. So there is a bit of uh, space for that. And then we've got the technical spec. Okay, and inside the box, first of all, we've got the board in an anti-static bag. And it also comes in this cardboard tray. Then we've got the bundled accessories. So first of all, we've got the uh, four SATA 36G cables. Those are silver. Got the rear I.O. shield, which is cushioned there on the back. Flexible SLI bridge for your multi-GPU configurations. Got a nice G1 sticker there, G1 Gaming. And then we've got the driver CD with the utilities. User manual, now that is pretty thin, so that is just going to cover your basics. And to go with that, we've got the multilingual installation guide. Got the door hanger there. And then we've got that leaflet which uh, allows you to enter a competition. you just got to register your board. You've got the QR code there. And then lastly, we've got that G-Connect. Now this little adapter here allows you to plug in your cables from the very front panel of your case. So your power button, your reset button. You plug it directly into here. And then uh, this just allows you to uh, connect up to the board a lot easier. Because usually the front panel on the actual uh, board itself is very fiddly and you've got very little space to deal with. Okay, so here is our Gaming 5. So if you've seen other Z170 boards from Gigabyte, you'll see some key similarities there with the styling. Across this board, we've got a combination of red, black, and silver. And so if you're planning to use any of those colors for a particular themed configuration, then other hardware is gonna coordinate well. Now, personally, from an aesthetics point of view, we would have preferred a black PCB, but Gigabyte are using a glossy brown design. Another thing you'll notice is the lack of rear IO cover, which we've seen on numerous 10 series boards and of course since this board has the MX within its name this form factor here that we're dealing with is micro ATX. We're now going to move in for a closer look at the different areas of this board so let's start at the CPU socket so of course being an LGA1151 board we have the support there for Intel 6th generation of Skylake CPUs so you can use any of the chips there from that family but since we are dealing here with a performance board most users are probably going to be going for the unlocked 6600K or the 6700K. Another thing to note is that that CPU socket there is gold plated, which is said to offer better signal transmission. And by the way, if you do have a cooler which is designed for 1150 or 1155, then that cooler is going to fit on this board as the diameters are exactly the same. You don't need to go out and buy another cooler if you do already have one. Now Gaming 5 comes with an 8 phase power design which is digital and uh, rather than using the 10k black caps which we've seen on Gigabyte's other ATX boards, this micro ATX Gaming 5 here uses some lower end caps which we've seen on the Gaming 3. And covering the MOSFETs there, we have a dual heatsink design. Uh, those heatsinks there are not interconnected with any copper heat pipes, but they do look attractive utilizing that black, red, and silver. Just over towards the back, we have an eight pin CPU power connector and Gigabyte include dual CPU fan headers, which is useful if you do have twin cooling fans. Moving on to the memory area, we of course have allocation for dual channel DDR4 and we have support there for up to 64 gig, up to 3466 megahertz, and XMP 2.0 is available too. And just below the memory there, we have dual USB 3 headers, 
which is really good to see as quite a few boards have just a single port. And just in front of those ports we have a single strip of SATA Express with another two strips sitting immediately to the left. So those six ports there can actually be used as SATA 36G for something like an SSD if you aren't using an Express device. Now right in the corner there we have the front panel ports which are for connecting up things like the power button on your case. So here we have the G connector, which as you can see just pops into that panel really nicely. And of course it just makes life a little bit easier to connect those cables up as it can be quite fiddly with very little space to play with. Now just behind this we have that small heatsink there which covers the driving force behind the board, the Intel Z170 chip. Now even though this is a micro ATX board, we still get a considerable amount there of PCI Express. So we have three PCI Express 3.0 X16s and a single PCI Express 3.0 X1. And the modes for each of those X16s are 16, 8 and 4. So if you're planning to use multiple graphics cards, the overall mode will drop to the lowest that you're using. And uh, NVIDIA SLI and Crossfire, AMD Crossfire are fully supported for those multi-GPU configurations. So guys, if you are using just one card, then that top one is the best to use as it will utilize those full 16 lanes. And another thing just to note is that Gigabyte has dressed those PCI Express with metal shielding, which is stainless steel. And along with the added anchor point, this will help support heavy graphics cards. Now right next to the X1, we have a tuning IC, which is Turbo B Clock. So this allows you to have greater control over the BCLK frequency uh, when overclocking. So it offers modifications from 90 to 500 megahertz. Now with this being an Intel Z170 board, we do have NVMe support. So above that top X16, we have a single M.2 slot, and that provides us with the bandwidth of up to 32 gig. And with that M.2 being above the PCI Express, it means that when we do install a graphics card, the card does not consume that drive. And that is essential really, as we need as much airflow as possible with M.2 drives to keep those temperatures down. So immediately next to the PCI Express, we of course have the audio components. So in this area, we have the following. We've got an isolated area there with a tracer LED, which can be modified to have animations like a pulse. We've got the metal EMI shielding there around that Realtek ALC 1150 chip, which is well known for offering great audio. We've got the Nichicon audio caps, the audio game booster dip switches, upgradable OP amp, which can be swapped out, and gold-plated audio jacks. So, you know, quite a lot of emphasis there on the audio components, which is really good to see. Okay, and lastly, we arrive at the rear I.O. section of Gaming 5, and this gives us the following connectivity. We've got the PS2 keyboard mouse combo port, two USB 2 ports, VGA and DVI for onboard video out, USB 3.1 Type-C and Type-A next to that in the red, USB 3 port above, a gold-plated HDMI port for up to 4K out, gigabit LAN there via Killer E2200, and then below that two USB 3 ports, and then there's gold-plated audio jacks with the optical functionality. So some good features there, but it would have been nice to perhaps see one or two extra USB 3 ports. Okay, so that concludes our look at the Z170 MX Gaming 5. So we've had a uh, look at quite a few, uh, quite a number of full-sized ATX and mini ATX boards using the Z170 chipset, but this is actually the first time we've had a look at anything using micro ATX, and it is pretty impressive, you know, what they've crammed in there in such a small space. Now the styling is going to favour kind of themes which are perhaps darker, uh, those that have the red tones. But you know what Gigabyte has done with the overall look is very much consistent with the rest of the series, and it is pleasing on the eye. Feature-wise, we've got some really useful features, uh, twin USB 3 headers, the support for multi-GPUs, and of course those steel reinforcements there, which is brilliant, and of course that solid audio solution with loads of features and the control too. Now there are a few areas which we do feel could be slightly improved. Uh, for the LAN, we're not a big fan really of the Killer E2200. Personally, I've had quite a few issues, uh, a few blips with the Killer LAN before in the, in the past. Uh, much prefer Intel controllers and also uh, perhaps would have been good to see some more USB 3 on the rear I.O. But apart from that, this is a very good board. So guys, the full review is going to be on the screen and in the description very soon. All the benchmarks are going to be over there and the best overclock with the 6700K. 4.8 is the best that we've been able to squeeze out of this chip. So uh, head over there to see how we did. So I really hope you did enjoy this week's video, guys. If you did, then please hit that like button. And uh, actually, we've got some great stuff lined up, some really interesting stuff, uh, videos coming up in the next few weeks. So if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do so, so you don't miss out on any of those. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys next Friday.